the Rappaport Broadcasting System, it's the All Sports Cable Network's Medical Report. Cracked ribs, torn cartilage, fractured bones, dislocated shoulders, professional athletes. How do they cope with injuries that leave them not only in pain, but often facing uncertain careers? Hello, I'm Gail Roberts. I'm Bobby Tennant. Well, it happens every year. Career-threatening injuries such as the one Dodger pitcher Oral Hershiser suffered before undergoing rotator cuff surgery. Ouch. Which requires spinal anesthesia that's injected directly into the spine. And though Hershiser felt no pain, he was witness to his own operation. Oh, man. As the doctor scraped the torn cartilage, and perhaps cracked the joint itself to manipulate it into position. Bobby, come here. Move, move. Bobby, Bobby, talk to me, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, oh, Bobby. Bobby, say something, Bobby. Delmonte Vegetable Classics. Your mom can make them in here in three minutes. Fancy vegetables with sauces. When vegetables get to be this easy to make, they could show up at any meal. New Del Monte Vegetable Classics. So easy and delicious, some people are nervous. Remember those Easter's with the big poopy dresses? Oh. And the big pink bows that mom had to have just perfect and color you have to have lots of color in an easter basket and then there was that one special thing so you knew that it was your basket and not your sister's wasn't that great well i guess it's official we've, we've become, become our mother, mother. At Hallmark, you'll not only find all you're looking for this Easter, you'll find looking for it a pleasure. I finally found it! It's the DuckTales movie on video cassette. It's animation in the classic Disney tradition, filled with your kids' favorite characters in a big screen adventure. DuckTales the movie, Treasure of the Lost Lamp. Own the next great Disney collectible for only $22.99. Stress, headache, pain grips me here, like a rope. I take Anison 3. It works. It's not aspirin, so it doesn't upset my stomach. Aspirin-free Anison 3, or original Anison. Strong pain relief for today's stress headaches. For you, a gift. For me? Oh, Gail, thank you. Why'd you get me a gift? No special reason. I mean, it was on sale, and I thought, what the heck? I make a lot more money than you do. <laughs> Actually, everyone here does. I, I thought you could probably use a new shirt. 
It's beautiful, thank you. Uh, Gail, I need the copy on the Rangers Blackhawks game. Jeff, did you notice this new shirt that Gail got me? I think I'll go try it on, honey. Hey! From Gail, for me. For me, from Gail. Gail, go try it this game. Oh, the Rangers Blackhawks, right. Actually, Jeff, I haven't started that yet. I've been busy. I'll get it to you. Uh-huh. Gail, is it true you gave Bobby a shirt? A gift? Man, oh man, I saw this coming. You have a crush on Bobby Tannen. I but do not. How oh. can you have a crush on a man that you hate? Oh, right, like there's an alternative? Hey, my Vivian doesn't hate a bone in my body, and I've been in love with that woman every day for 27 euphoric years. You know, I had urges of the lawn. The first time I ever saw her in my sixth grade class, Standing in front of the blackboard, writing out our homework assignments. She was your teacher. You married your sixth grade teacher. I knew she'd be my wife the second I saw her bend over and pick up that eraser. Okay, people, Gail, Jeff, Missy, everybody, meeting in the conference room right now, right away. Pronto, let's go, everybody, let's go. Gail, the point Jeff's trying to make is, you've got a crush on a man. So you extend your heart to him, and then, because he is a man, he takes your heart and he drop kicks it into a pit in hell. Okay. Oh, so we're all here. Good. Excellent. <clears throat> all right, first order of business. Uh, that'll be uh, tomorrow night's sports chat. Now, our guest is going to be Marge Schott, proud owner of the 1990 world champion Cincinnati Reds. So Bob and Missy should uh, brush up on their Cincinnati info. Wait, Bobby and, and Missy? Yeah, Bob and Missy will be doing sports chat tomorrow night. Why am I being taken off a of sports chat, Mac? Why? Well, because Mr. Rappaport said so. Where is he? Where is Mr. Rappaport? Well, Gail, he's in the conference room right now, but he's very busy. He's uh, doing some network on a related stuff. Gail! Mr. Rappaport, I want to know why you're taking me off a of sports chat. Oh, sweetheart, do me a little favor, will you? Take this little crystal diode and put it over there in that crystal diode box. Mr. Rappaport... Oh, uh, 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 crystal diode box. All right, here it comes. Nice and easy. Oh, God, I love it. You know, I've been doing this since, what, the late 50s? Of course, it was a lot easier then. Big tubes, lots of big, thick wires. Nowadays, you really got to know what you're about. It's wonderful you know how to fix a TV. Now, could we just please talk about sports channels? Oh, see, I don't fix them. I just take them apart. That's the fun of it. Putting them back together again, well, hell. I just send the parts over to Mike's house. Let his kids put them back together again. They can't, of course. It's too complicated. Just confuses the little tykes. Why are you taking me off a of sports chat? Well, Gail, let's just say that you're uh well, your work hasn't been up to snuff lately. Now, uh, I think you know what the problem is. Oh. Hell, I've even warned you about the problem. So under the circumstances, see, I just don't see how... Okay, I look, I... Mr. Rappaport, I know I've had a problem on my mind, and I'm going to get uh, rid of that problem today. You are? Yes, and then I won't have a problem anymore. It'll be gone, absolutely, without a doubt. You're sure? Yes. Okay, you can go back on Sports Jack. But this better be the end of it. Thank you. You won't be sorry. I better not be. At least I could do it. I mean, you got me this beautiful shirt. Oh, yes. Well, actually, that's kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, Bobby, these last few days have been very confusing for me. And oh, are you, are you talking about when we kissed on the air in front of Terry Pounds? Yeah, I suppose that's what I mean. See, I, I feel that I have to... Once. Hey, where are you going, little guy? Come on, come on, come on. Okay. Okay. You, uh, 
These last few days, confusing. Go ahead. Yes, like I, I was saying, I, I've been confused and... Oh. Okay, look, my work is very important to me, and I realize now that I just... I can't afford to let it slip. I'm sorry, Bobby. I know this is probably going to be hard for you, but in the long run, I think it's for the best. Yeah. Come here. Poor thing. Come here. Remember in the beginning? Gosh, it was fun, wasn't it? I mean, I asked you on a date. You slugged me. You went to a movie. You threw up all over me. <laughs> and these are memories that we'll always have. Gail, see, I, I've always prided myself on a, on a, a lack of emotional depth. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard to talk to girls so intelligent as yourself. Perhaps if you were a groundskeeper or a linesman, maybe no, even a you guard. Think you're breaking up with me. Breaking up? No. I, I, you have to actually go with somebody before you can break up with them, don't oh, you? Oh, God. Oh, God. Why are you breaking up with me? This hurts. This, I don't like this, Bobby. I threw up on you, and this is my thanks? Oh, gee, Gail, look. Fine, oh, walk away. Yeah, you, you know what? I got it. I can walk away, too. I can walk right out that door. And believe you me, mister, when I do, that's it. I'm not giving you a second thought. Nada. Okay? When I go, that's it. I'm not seeing you anymore. All right, all right. Except, well, I'm just, you know, I'll be at the officer when you're at home. Okay. Good. That's fine with me. conversation with anybody who's, you know, over three years old. Hi, Frankie. How you doing? So I'd like to tell you what. You know what? Emotional depth. You can take it. No, I can't. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to give him the satisfaction of me doing anything. I want you to keep that, Frankie, because I, I want it back. Yes, I want it back. I have the key back. Okay, move, Frankie. All right. Come on, honey. Move. Move. Frankie, uh, yeah, what? You never changed your mind? Sure. Yeah. Move. Frankie, honey, baby, got to have the key. That's why Century 21 professionals are trained to know their business better. Skilled at making everything work together. Committed to giving you the highest level of professional service. The standard of performance by which all others will be judged. Like you just stepped out. Selective Styling Collection gives you salon beautiful hair every day. Your style shines, your style holds. Make it soft, make it bold. Ooh, like you just stepped out of a salon. Salon Selective's mousses and gels for control. Spritzes and sprays for hold. Your combination works even better together for salon-styled hair. Like you just stepped out of a salon. If you've gone all day without any crunchy roasted almonds in pure milk chocolate, now's the time to correct that with a Hershey Almond Bar. Hershey, the great American chocolate bar. Last year, 7 million people discovered Coadville. Coadville just cleared everything up. My sinuses were clear. The lead weights had just gone away. I'm very happy that I discovered Coadville. Coadville, advanced formula for cold and sinus relief. Next on Murphy Brown. The news really sucks. Can Murphy uncover a happy story? You are a happy story. Yeah, right. Or is good news for the birds? Next.
If she pleads guilty to a driving offense, she's admitting it's her car, and we can connect her to the jewelry. And the murder. Suppose we go to court on this, and I, and I twist you up like a pretzel. Your pizza's getting cold. Damn! The Antagonist, Tuesday, March 26th. CBS Late Night premieres Tuesday, April 2nd. It's too hot to sleep. dog is a big commitment. <laughs> Bobby, this is real difficult for me, so let me just come right to the point. Even though there never was anything between us, I want to know why you wanted to put an end to something that never existed in the first place. Oh, see, that's a tough question. I'm not even sure what it was that we had that never existed. I just told you, nothing. Now, what I want to know is why you wanted to stop something before it never even happened. I mean, you think you're too good for me, is that it? No. What, you think it's too much responsibility to not be involved with me? No. Well, what then? I don't know. I'm confused. Well, let me tell you something. Mr. will always have memories. I have never thrown up on another man in my life. And if you can't appreciate the emotional significance of that, I just feel plain sorry for you. What emotional significance? Oh, come on. Don't tell me you're too obtuse to see it. To see what? The emotional significance, you idiot. What the hell have we been talking about here? We were talking about something that never happened. We were. And ever since nothing happened, I can't get you out of my work. I can't get you out of my thoughts. I can't get you out of my dreams. I can't get you out of my life. You dream about me, Gail? No. It's an absolute lie. Wait a minute, but that's what you said. Out of my thoughts, out of my work, out of my dreams. Well, if I did, I was mistaken, because I have never dreamt about you in my life. Yes, you have. If I had, I would have woken up screaming. Have you heard me scream from my apartment? Well, yeah, a couple of times, but I think you're already awake. Oh, just kidding, just kidding, just Please, look, I, I realize I have to tell you something. What? Well, those things that I said today, I... I didn't mean... I do... I do want to know you. I do want to date you. I, I want to hold you. Really? Yeah. Oh, then there is something. Yeah, I guess maybe there is. But you don't know for sure. All right, I know, I know. There is definitely something. Good, because whatever it is, it has to end. <laughs> what does? I don't even know what it was that we got never started. Well, whatever it was, it isn't anymore. And it's not going to be because I'm going to stop it before it never even starts. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I hurt you. You know, I, I just realized something. What? <laughs> You're out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's important you not become bitter, Bobby. Because I really didn't want to hurt you. Yes, you did. Well, maybe I did. <laughs> Just honestly didn't think I'd be able to. Really? Yeah. Okay. No, Bobby. No. <sighs> Fine, bye. Good. It's good that you're going, you see, because now I'm free. Yes. I'm free to not date other people. <laughs> A native and sixth generation Cincinnatian, Marge Shot is the heart and soul of the Cincinnati Reds. Since becoming the team's president in 1985, she has helped rebuild the once proud Big Red Machine. Her efforts culminating with a sweep of the 1990 World Series against the heavily favored Oakland Athletics. Hi, I'm Gail Roberts. And I'm Bobby Tannen, and welcome to Sports Chat Marge. Well, thank you, Bob. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, Marge, how do you do it? I mean, you run a multi-million dollar car dealership. You're all over the country with your team. Your hectic schedule is so busy, but yet you stay as fresh as a daisy. How? I do what I can. You certainly do. And I've got to say that that coat dress there is a very nice combination of crimson and what would you say, black? Is that a cotton blend or, or synthetic? Oh, well, I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> I suppose it's on the tag. <laughs> well, it's really very smart, Chris. Marge, what do you yeah. think your chances are of repeating as World Series champs? Well, Gail, we've got, uh, once again, a very strong team. Yeah, led by a very strong and very striking woman. <laughs> uh, are, are you working out now, Marge? Are you training in any way? <laughs> I'm a little, uh, I try to get a little exercise. Well, I'll tell you what, it is certainly paying off, Marge. Marge, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'd like you Go. to tell us what you um, told your players after they won the World Series. Well, at the beginning of this year, uh, we're a very family-orientated team and mm -hmm. have a lot of children, babies. And I said, now, guys, you produce off-field. That's great, but let's produce on-field this year now. What a sexy thing to say. <laughs> Marge, I don't know what it is, but I'm suddenly in the mood to run towards you in a field of poppies. <laughs> You're a rascal. <laughs> That's what you are. Marge, let me, let, me, let me ask you one thing. Have you ever been to... Paris. Okay, that's it. Excuse me. Mar Just a minute, honey. Uh, uh, yes, uh, in fact, next week I'm going. Oh, Mars la belle mange. You know, if you're oh. not busy. Oh, busy. Springtime in Paris to be with you, to walk down the Champs Elysees arm in arm, to eat croissant under the Arch de Triomphe, to make love at the Louvre, to dance under the Eiffel Tower at late at night. Just Mac, to be off the show. Someone. Oh, Robert. Robert. Oh. Excuse me. Bobby, come on down here and sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, Mac, I'm going to need that tiny little screwdriver to get this one started. Oh, in your hand, sir. Huh? Oh, so it is. <laughs> now, Bobby. What would you think my thoughts might be on that disgusting play of adolescent chicanery I saw out there today? Oh. Well, sir, if chicanery means what I think it does, it means you're happy, yet you have a painful boil. <laughs> Bobby, you don't write any copy for us, do you? Copy myself. Yeah. Now, how would you assess your feelings for Gail at this particular time? Oh. Well, I, I really, 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 really want her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, look at this, Mac. This little piece just slips right out of there. Mm. Don't worry, sir. I'm sure that little TV doesn't work already. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> now, Bobby, this little thing you got going on with Gail, it's bad news, and it's going to stop. Well, if you mean that I shouldn't uh, kiss her on the air anymore, sir, I, I think I can do that. No, Bobby, I mean kissing her on the air, I mean kissing her off the air, in the office, at home, in a restaurant, in a taxi, in a Winnebago. Why? Oh, well, I can think of a thousand and one reasons, but the best one is because I said so. I can't kiss Gail at all? Wow! 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 Wow!
that's hotter than a ski mask on a camel. We'll be right back. Okay, we know what we're eating. Why don't you pick the wine? What do you feel like? Red or white? Surprise me. Today's cooking is lighter, fresher, full of natural, delicate flavors. Like today's wine. White Zinfandel. Gallo. So how'd I do? I'd say perfect, but I'd never hear the end of it. Ernest and Julio <laughs> Gallo invite you to try a surprising White Zinfandel. It will change the way you think about Gallo. Looking good. It's important. From the cut of your lapels right down to the crease in your pants. That's why you should go to the JCPenney Hager Week sale and save on all Hager casual slacks and finely tailored clothing. The man who murdered her husband was supposed to be in prison, but there wasn't enough room. We're coming out. Not if she can help it. 48 hours. Then... He's dead. McCabe teams up with his doctor to solve a murder. As you can see, we make house calls. Dick Van Dyke guest stars on Jake and the Fat Man, right after 48 hours, Wednesday. over the floor. No, I broke your window. Oh, yes, you did. Now, there's glass all over the floor. Oh, I know. I, I guess I could have gone the front door, but I was, I was in a hurry. I was in a hurry. Uh, you mad? Oh, no. No, no. of course not. You did the right thing. It's just that there's so much glass all over the floor. <laughs> well, well... I, uh... Bobby, I'm exhausted. I, I think we should clean it up. Yeah. Well, it's the logical thing. I mean, I think we should do the logical thing. Oh. Don't you? Look. Oh, oh yeah. I, I mean, the other would be would be fun, but but logic is important. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ooh. Well, oh. I'm gonna go get a broom. Maybe you could pick up the big pieces. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just use my hands. <laughs> Bobby. Uh, yeah, Gil. It was good, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it sure was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just think, I think I used my mouth to fix this. <laughs> The people of CBS News. Dan Rather. Connie Chung. Mike Wallace. Bob Schieffer. Ed Bradley. Leslie Stahl. Morley Safer. And Charles Kuralt. Experience. CBS News. This is CBS.